One of the most attractive characteristics of vinyl records for me has always been what you might call the audiovisual aspect. That is, the way a record looks under strong light, whether stationary in your hand or rotating on a turntable platter while being played. The inscribed sound waves on every record reflect light in a way unique to that recorded signal. A groove of loud sounds reflects a lot of light, whereas a quiet passage appears much darker. On this example you can see straight away that the long second track is quite quiet and subdued, and the short third track is very loud, purely from the amount of light being reflected by the walls of the cut groove. Likewise, we can see that this single side alternates between loud and soft passages. More generally, different types of sound material each have their own visual signature when committed to vinyl. The reflected patterns from, say, a guitar-based pop record look quite different from those of a classical symphony or the spoken word. There are dynamic visual effects too. If the beat of a thumping disco floor filler is slightly off from the record's rotational period, the visible result can be a pleasing spiral pattern, moving inward or outward as the disc revolves. Which got me thinking. Would it be possible to create a piece of music, or at least some kind of signal, so that when inscribed as a groove in a record, it presented a particular desired visual pattern? Could the tail wag the dog? With that in mind, I've developed Vinyl Draw, a Windows computer program to do exactly that. It takes as input a bitmap image file, extracts an annular section, the dimensions of which can be specified, and produces a wave sound file. It does this by inspecting each pixel of the selected section in spiral fashion and extracting luminance information. This data modulates an AM carrier of a frequency that is set by the user. The output file sounds like this. If things go well, when the sound file is recorded to disk using the same speed and pitch as those specified in the program, the extracted section of the original image should be discernible as a pattern in the inscribed groove. I say, if things go well, because there are very many opportunities for things not to go well. If the speed of the recording platter changes from the nominal, even by a tiny amount, then the picture will end up skewed. Here's an early attempt of mine, embossing on clear plastic an image of chunky lettering on a plain background, and you can see that, in spite of my carefully setting the platter speed before starting the recording, the image has wandered about 15 degrees or so of one revolution during the six minutes it took to make the record. Now that amount of variation would be fairly acceptable for a music recording, the total drift being less than one part in 5,000, or about 0.02%, but it's no good for drawing pictures. My home-built recording turntable uses a stepper motor driven by PWM pulses from an Arduino, so my solution to the drift problem was to fix a photo interrupter on the deck next to the platter and glue a little metal flange to the platter itself so that the Arduino could have some measure of the actual platter speed and take immediate action if it starts to wander. This action is carried out using a simple PI proportional integral routine that corrects momentary fluctuations in the speed but, perhaps more importantly, takes account of the cumulative error since the start of the recording and tries to reduce it as far as possible. Tuning the PI system, getting the coefficients right, took a couple of days and a number of blank disks, and while I was doing this, I found that my particular Arduino's clock was running a whisker slow, about one part in 10,000, so I had to include a tiny compensating factor in the timing to bring things into line. I recorded this test file, created by Vinyl Draw from a crosshairs pattern, onto the back of an old CD to check there was no drift. In other words, the four radial lines remain radial without skewing. Here are some others. All the images are embossed onto clear plastic and are best viewed or photographed in either strong sunshine or under a bright electric lamp. The process works best for black and white images with clearly defined lines, but it does a fairly good job with full colour images too, converting them to grayscale. The inscribed result in these cases is a little like those holograms you get on credit cards and so on. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and haven't found it too pointless. Thanks for viewing.